Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Warner. I'm the founder of Mixergy.com. It's the place where I've done over a thousand interviews, but not a single one of them is like the one that you're about to see here today. Here's the thing. I got really passionate about uh, chatbots recently. Actually, it was about a year ago. I invested in a company that happened into chatbots and man, the founder of the company, Shane Mack, kept showing me the software that they were building, how chatbots are starting to take over chat conversations and I got fired up. And for those of you who don't know, chatbots are basically, it's any software that can interact with a human being over a messaging app. So uh, if you go on Facebook Messenger and you hit one of the uh, weather chatbots and say, hey, what's the weather gonna be like tomorrow? That's a chatbot that's responding to you. A chatbot is also, uh, if you ever use Hipmunk on Skype, they have a chatbot there which will allow you to say things like, I wanna fly from Chicago to New York. The chatbot will say, yeah, what days and will you be flying back? You text message it back and it says, okay, here are the options and you can buy it through the chat bot. The thing that's exciting for me is that it's a brand new way of reaching people. I mean, up until now, if someone comes to your website and uh, someone came to your website and you wanted to bring them back, you might ask them for their email address and you'd have a good shot of bringing them back. But increasingly that's becoming harder to do. People are not checking their email. They're not responding. They're not clicking. Uh, a few years ago, excuse me, apps became big. So someone would come to your site and you try to get them to install your app as a way of continuing the relationship with them. But we're finding that people don't install apps nearly as often. And uh, once they do, they often don't even check them once, which is a startling um, thing to realize. But everyone checks their messaging apps. In fact, as I'm talking to you right now, my phone is vibrating. I'm sure it's my wife who's sending me messages. There's no way I'm not going to check it, right? That's the power of, of messaging and chatbots allow us to reach a lar large number of people um, using software. So we can do it all in a customized way. Anyway, that's why I'm passionate about this. Uh, we actually created a program at Mixergy where we teach this and if you're looking at your screen and you see some people whose names you don't recognize like Kelly, Mary, Derek, um, they are in the program. They've actually created bots here. Tam Pham is also here, he's helped lead the course to make sure that everyone who signed up in the class has an opportunity to create a bot. And in this community, we kept hearing about this guy, guy who I knew, Ezra Firestone. I knew him forever. Ezra is the guy who years ago co-founded Boom by Cindy Joseph. This is uh, organic skincare and cosmetics for women. He made a name for himself by being a master at selling this stuff. But that's not why we heard about him. We heard about him because he was at a conference and this guy must have blown the roof off of the freaking conference because he is all anyone talked about. And specifically what he excited them about was he showed them how chatbots can help grow their businesses. And people were like, whoa, never heard of chatbots, never knew it could actually grow. And this guy Ezra has actual numbers to show us. Man, freaking fantastic. So they were talking about it. I kept asking him to come on here and talk about it. And that's what we're going to do here today. And the reason you see other people on your screen is because I wanted to bring in some of the graduates of our program to ask questions, to make sure that what Ezra's showing us about chatbots actually makes sense for other people and doesn't just work for these amazing marketers who I think uh, uh, can do anything like Ezra. Ezra can take anything and, and make it work well. I want to make sure that it's actually practical for us who have some experience in chatbots and for you, the person who's listening to uh, this podcast. And um, if you're interested in having a bot created or if you're interested in learning more about this program, by the time this interview is published, I'll have a new website up. It's called Bot Academy. You can go there and see what a bot is. You can try out our bot. But I wanna take a look at Ezra's screen. Bring him on here. Ezra, thanks so much for doing this. Um, um, thank you for having me on. Uh, that was, I feel pretty good about myself now. It's a nice intro. <laughs> Dude, I, you should feel good. I've been trying to get you on Mixer G for years. Literally, you've been in our, in our pipe drive. I'm glad that you're coming on here today. Yeah, thanks. And you know what's cool about this conversation is actually, uh, my viewpoint is that it's not particularly complex what we're doing with our chatbot. And uh, we'll, we'll get to take a look at it and you can make that sort of decision for yourself. But I think it's pretty straightforward. And I think any business, regardless of what you're selling, regardless of the industry that you're in, uh, can leverage sort of these three ways um, to use a chat bot uh, for your brand. Okay, let's take a look at your screen. We'll walk right, through how we go. you do this. Screen I'll ask questions. Shared. The group will be able to chat in questions to me and I'll bring them in uh, via voice as it makes sense to do it. 
But I want you guys, if you're listening, Kelly, Derek, uh, Tam, Gustavo to ask. Go ahead. What are we looking at here? All right. So uh, this is Facebook Messenger bots leveraging artificial intelligence for profit. How people consume the digital medium has changed and what you, what you can do about that. So my name is Ezra Firestone. Uh, I run a company called Smart Marketer. I also run a company called Boom by Cindy Joseph, Be Friendly Skincare, Zipify Apps. I've got a team of 45 people. Uh, we do tens of millions of dollars in revenue every year. The reason why I'm sh uh, telling you that is so that you know that I know what I'm talking about. Like I actually do this stuff. I love it. I'm very passionate about it. And what I'm going to be sharing with you today is uh, from my own experience. So what I want to do first, by the way, that's me. I'm just some dude, you know, uh, who happens to be interested in marketing. Uh, I dig I the hair. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do is kind of review the game that we're playing as business owners. And this presentation is geared towards business owners. If you don't own a business, then uh, this may be less relevant. Uh, but it still, I think, will be relevant regardless of what you're doing. Because the game that I play in business is relationship, is collective experience, is intimacy, is value. And let me explain that. My viewpoint is that every brand is simply a group of people that you are building a relationship with around a collective experience that they are having. And the goal is to create some intimacy between your brand and that person who is having an experience and add value to their life beyond trying to sell them some stuff. And if you're able to do that effectively, and this is uh, Cindy Joseph, who's my business partner in Boom by Cindy Joseph, then you're able to uh, have a business. And so our business in this case is geared around the experience of being a woman over 40. And in, in our society, women are told that their value declines over time, where men are told that their value appreciates over time. That's not really what this uh, is about. But the point is that we're having a conversation about an experience that a group of people are having. We're adding value to their life through content and also making offers that we think are relevant to them. So that's kind of the game that we play as business owners is relationship around collective experience with the goal of creating intimacy and value with a human being. So that is the frame that I'd like you to take as a business owner. And before we get into how we're leveraging Facebook Messenger bots, I want to talk about the way that people are consuming the digital medium because that fundamentally leads into this conversation that we're having. So what's happened over the last several years is that touch-based consumption of a digital medium, yes, I do have a rose gold iPhone, uh, and this is, uh, I don't know if you can see the screen here, but uh, anyways, I've got a, a picture of my wife with a, a grumpy face on my screen. Just so that when I look down, uh -huh. I just make sure that like, is the decision I'm about to make like... <laughs> which, well, she's which, being grumpy. I see it. You know, it's a grumpy face about you getting on the phone yet again. Yeah, okay. pretty much. And by the way, so, for anyone who's listening to the to the podcast, the audio version, I know that's the most popular way to consume Xergy. I'll describe anything that's on the screen so you can catch up. But also, don't be afraid to come to Mixergy.com and see the video of this. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, please watch the video. So yeah. touch has taken over. So the way that people used to consume the digital medium was they would sit down at laptops and desktop computers and they'd consume the internet for large periods of time um, and a couple times throughout the day. But as mobile, mobile-based consumption of the internet, as we got these mobile phones and got to carry them around with us and touch-based consumption took over, now what's happening is that people are consuming more often throughout the day, but in shorter durations of time. So they're consuming on, on the toilet. They're consuming in the line at the bank. They're consuming the digital medium at, for these little 15 to 30 to one minute segments many, many times throughout the day, which results in more overall consumption. So I want to give you some statistics that's, that are going to frame this conversation. So 33% of people who show interest on a mobile advertisement convert on a desktop. 67% of your consumers, and there were just some flames on the screen, by the way, 67% of your consumers start shopping on one device and continue on another device. More than 60% of adults in the United States have two devices, and a quarter of those people have three devices, and people are moving to bigger devices to make purchase decisions. And a quick aside for those Wait, people, to make purchase decisions or to make purchases? To make purchases. Yeah, to make purchases. It, it seems like what you told me, sorry to interrupt your flow, tell me no, if this is too much, but no, no. it seems as based on what you told me before we started, you are noticing that people will, will start on their mobile phones, start researching, but when it's time to really make that purchase, they go to their desktops. 
this is these statistics are directly from Facebook. I'm the number three spender uh, in e-commerce using the Facebook self-serve ad platform. I spent a couple days with them uh, talking to them about how we're leveraging Facebook for direct response. And these statistics that I'm giving you are coming directly from PDFs that I got that I'm not actually allowed to share the PDFs from Facebook with their data. And so basically what we did that's helped us a lot, just as a quick aside on the advertising front, if you're on a budget and you want to cut your cost per acquisition on Facebook advertising down by at least 30%, what you do is you mimic user behavior. And what I mean by that is we know that people need more than one touch point to achieve a conversion at this point. More, nine times out of 10, you're gonna need to engage someone once and then retarget them to engage them again with your brand. So what you do is you run your first advertisement on a mobile phone because that's where people are starting. And then you run your second advertisement, your third, fourth touch point on desktop and laptop computers because we know that 67% of consumers are moving from one device to another to make purchases. And we know that people are moving to big devices to actually complete the purchase. So you can mimic that user behavior and uh, see a significant cut in cost per acquisition it might be a little technical, it might be a little high level, but if you're spending under, let's say, $1,000 a day on advertising, that is a great strategy to use. And then once you're spending more than 1000 bucks a day, you're going to need to open up and obviously retarget on every device and et cetera. Um, Makes sense. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. And actually, that's my experience too. I kept looking up uh, stand and sit desks, you know, the kind that you can automatically raise and lower yeah, for yeah. days on my phone. I finally waited to sit at the office here yesterday and buy it before, you know, on did a you, computer. Uh, did you buy the, um, uh, which one did you buy? Because I just recently got one. Uh, what is it called? Li uh, it'll come to me in a second. Anyway, which one did you get? You me. So I'll keep going here. Uplift, so, uplift desk. That's uplift. the one I got with yeah. um, really nice wood. The mobile world that we live in comes with fragmentation, which is where we begin our conversation today. The average user has 194 plus channels that they consume from Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, iTunes, Google. Uh, you know, there's all these different channels that, that people are consuming from on their mobile devices. And Facebook and Instagram account for more time spent on mobile than the next 10 channels or next 10 platforms combined. I'm almost done with my statistics portion of this conversation. One in five people that spend, um, one in five minutes that are spent on a mobile device in the United States are spent on Facebook or Instagram. So that's really where we want to focus. So the question is, what does that mean for you as a business owner? Well, what it means is that we need multiple touch points in order to get someone to actually purchase from us most of the time. So there's this customer journey. There's when they're a prospect, then there's when they're a subscriber, then there's when they're a customer. So it's before they're, uh, you know, before they know about you, while they're getting to know you, and after they know about you. So there's these three phases. And the big idea here is that you're going to need multiple touch points across multiple channels before you get a conversion event. And I'm going to actually break down my sales funnel for you. It's going to be very visual. So I do recommend that you pop onto Mixergy.com and check this out. But the goal here is that we communicate with people based uh, differently based on how they've interacted with us, right? So we want to communicate with people based on their level of consumption or engagement with our brand. And I'm going to make this tangible for you in a moment here. And we want to do this on every available communication platform. So your business is, in my opinion, a group of people and multiple communication mediums. That's all your business is, is a group of people and multiple communication mediums that you are trying to communicate with them on based on whatever you've got to communicate, you know, whatever your brand is talking about. And at first it was only email. That was the way, when I thought of like, you know, 10 years ago, my brand, that meant my email list. That's what it was to me. That's what my brand was. That's what my community was. Then in about, I would say 2011, maybe 2012, pixeled lists came along. So you had the ability to uh, drop a pixel on someone's computer and retarget them based on how, what pages they visited. And that was another way that someone could join your community. And these are really two, the, the, still the big two, emails and ads. Those are the big two sort of communication channels. Uh-oh, my screen uh, flashed. The big two communication channels that we have as business owners. But now, in, in 2017, we've got a few new channels. We now have desktop push notifications. We now have Facebook messenger lists, and we now have mobile push notifications. So quickly to touch on the two that this presentation isn't about, 
desktop push notifications, uh, we use a, a service called pushcrew.com. And this gives us the ability to, when someone visits our website on a desktop or laptop computer, push a notification to them that says, hey, would you like to sign up to be notified on your desktop when we have new content? So that like, if they say yes, we're able to push a notification to them. This is maybe 5% of our community will actually do this. But we're, you know, we want to take advantage of every available channel. That, 5% that, will say yes, send me a desktop notification. That's correct. Okay. So and I have like, is you know, completely free. I've talked to them about, I talked to the founder, thankfully he knew and was a fan of Mixergy. So he told me they're planning on keeping it for free forever. They're, they're uh, a stats business. That's what their business model is, understanding the stats of websites online. What you're saying 5% will actually accept the push notification? What we're seeing is that around 5% are accepting our push notification. And we've got, you know, um, maybe... 12 to 15,000 subscribers on Boom and like 2,000 subscribers on Smart Marketer. And what's interesting is that like the technology that you're leveraging is also dictated by your user base. So with Boom, our user base is like 45 plus, 55 plus. And so they're less um, technologically savvy. So they're less, that we're getting less engagement on Push Crew than we are for Smart Marketer, which is like, you know, geared towards people who are internet nerds like me. You know, so like they're totally game to do push crew, you know. Uh, so it's, you know, the technology that you leverage is going to be dictated by the community that you're serving. However, and, and we'll just move on now to yep. mobile push notifications. What we think is a good idea is to create a mobile app for your, that iframes your website and, get, and then run ads to all of your buyers and email all of your buyers to incentivize them to download this mobile app. And that way... What, and this is kind of what it might look like is it's what ours looks like. Basically, this way, when we have an email communication, when we have a sale, when we have a blog post, we email people, we push crew them, we run ads to the folks who are on our pixeled lists, we do a push notification on our mobile app to the 30% of our buyers who download that, and we do a Facebook Messenger broadcast, which is what this is about because my viewpoint is that the next big channel, separate from email, separate from ads, is Messenger. I really and this is the heart of what we're getting at. The way that you reach people via messenger is a chat bot. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we're about to get into is actually how to leverage this. I like to do context. Like let's get into the room. Yes. Let's understand what we're I like that you do context and that you also have specific numbers, which people will see in a bit. Yeah. We're yeah. going to give you specific, actual specific numbers. So my viewpoint is that the, the next big communication channel, I think Andrew's viewpoint is Messenger. That is the channel that is growing extremely rapidly. And in fact, messaging apps are now bigger than social networks. And you might talk about this in your course. The top four uh, messenger apps are bigger than the top four social networks. So quickly, what is a chat bot? Well, if you can see the screen, it's not near this creepy. <laughs> like, I, every time I see this image, I think, man, I really need to get a new image for this. I mean, I've only done this presentation once before at a live event. I haven't done it anywhere else, so I haven't had a chance to change it. But basically, it's a computer software program that's developed to simulate intelligent conversation with a human being through written or spoken text. And they are going to be everywhere. You message, they reply back. And, and this trend of auto-conversing bots inside of messaging apps is called the conversational economy and it's it's rising right now it's growing and so basically like the future of how you communicate how you shop how you book travel how you uh, use services is all going to be in chatbots facebook has opened their api you can book ubers in there you can do i live in new york so like there's a lot of activity in the facebook messenger bot in our city because all of these um services that new yorkers use like uh you know um, delivery services and things like that are all now having API connection to Facebook Messenger. And it's only getting more and more um, sort of aggressive. Like soon what's going to happen is you're going to walk into a cafe and they're going to Facebook Messenger you the Wi-Fi code. Like it's, yeah. it's coming and, and it's kind of exciting. You're saying so what, today what I, you can actually order food to your house using a Messenger chat window. Today, you can do that, yes. And it's all a bot. It's not a human being who's sitting on chat and uh, saying, hey, someone just bought. I think there's a connection to a, a human if you need it. Um, yep. They tend but, to have a connection to a human when you need it, but for the, for the most part, it's a bot. And I didn't realize that was that pervasive in New York. The dude, every app is 
getting into Facebook Messenger because Facebook was smart. Facebook did what Apple was unwilling to do, which was open their API, right? Yeah. And then Facebook is now winning this race, you know? Uh, yeah, and frankly, when we talk about chatbots, they exist on lots of other platforms, including, as I said, Microsoft's Skype app. It's on there. Skype has been pushing it aggressively for me anyway. Uh, can but you imagine? Other than Facebook Messenger, which has opened it up, and Slack, which from the beginning seemed to court uh, chatbots, the others just aren't big enough players. And the reason we focus on Facebook Messenger is they now have one point, actually I'll let you talk, it. 1.2 billion users and growing and Facebook supports it and Facebook encourages it. Yeah, and imagine real quick what would have happened if Apple five years ago opened up right. their iMessage API. Right. You know I mean? Like Facebook Messenger wouldn't, would be so far behind, but they didn't want to do that. And I still see them doing it in the near future. If not this next version of uh, iOS, it's got to be the, the one after that. But you, they, don't you think that would have to, they would have to play this game at this point? Uh, Sorry. Okay, so yeah, go ahead. The top three ways to leverage Facebook Messenger automation and chat bots for every brand. Now, this is by no means the best ways. This is by no means the only ways. These are by no means the only ways. These are just how we're doing it and have found it to be effective for us and have gotten it to be our number 16 revenue channel in the last 30 days. Our, our, you know, when you look at revenue uh, that's coming in from a channel perspective into our brand that I'm about to show you, in the last 30 days, this is already number 16 and we basically just started. 